now we are standing strong in 2023 still we are having one of the highest gdp growth rates the economy is kind of better than the rest of the world but the scenario is not same in the european world there is inflation there is deflation continuously going simultaneously side by side and that is the problem when two things are going at the same time there is a chance of great depression we can say no now we can't say whether there is going to be a great depression or not but a great depression has been there in the year 2008 and 9 so here is the complete story of the global financial crisis we can say now how do we say there is a global financial crisis it has a definition given by imf so imf has defined this thing as a global financial crisis now we call it as the great depression also a similar kind of great depression was seen in the year 1929 why the reason was again second world war first world war, the verge of second world war and the aftermath of first world war we can say so when a world war was there after that there comes a depression in the entire globe that depression was called as the great depression and again in the year 2008 and 9 the depression we saw that was also called as the great depression now the problem with the great depression in this kind of setup is that the entire world is connected we often call about you know globalization the world is an entirely one economy one market now there are a lot of advantages there are a lot of benefits that we get out of one market one globe but there are some disadvantages and this is one of the disadvantages that even if there is a depression there is a financial crunch in one part of the world in one corner of the world because of the globalization because of the connected economies because of the connected world this one part of the problem gets transmitted to the rest of the world automatically so whether this will happen now or not we are not sure there are of course problems there is russia ukraine situation there is financial crisis in europe there are simultaneously issues and all those issues are getting transmitted from one part of the world to the other but here we are talking about the great depression or the global financial crisis of 2008 and 9 which started in us market but automatically it got transmitted to the entire of the europe and then it came to russia india and of course we have situations in india as well like i mean the asia but the asia specifically we are concerned about more of india what happened so here is the story my name is nirmal you guys are watching okay nirmal i know it's been a long time since i haven't uploaded any video but here we go and this is the start with the new year with the new video with the new concept with the new strategy let's get started with this thing so uh, i believe the slides are visible here is the title as you can see the financial crisis of 2008 which is very much clear with the title thumbnail with the kind of introduction i gave i know it i took a lot of time with the introduction but it is going to be a little bit longer video so make sure you uh, get your earphones plugged in so that you know rather than seeing it you are hearing it or if you have enough time if you have been patient and you are that focused let's get started with this thing so here we are going with the history of the event what actually happened how it started so i take a little bit long i go back to the 1991 when tim berner lee invented something called as world wide web now with this introduction of world wide web with the introduction of internet with the microsoft being you know uh, coming up of windows everything you know bringing a total entirely new setup for the world of internet or the world of it the world of computer because of which there was a bubble in the market and we call it as the it bubble the dot com bubble or the net dot net bubble whatever you call it as you know so this bubble what it did is because of this event the entire market was going up even if you have a company with the name internet it computer dot com anything because of that people were ready to invest in any damn business and what happens when you are investing without knowing automatically it is going to lead to some kind of speculation that was a high demand from the you know investor side and when there is a high demand from the investor side because of a higher demand the supply is being limited prices are going to shoot up and eventually what happened prices shot up but since there was no concrete you know business there was no concrete fundamental inside those investments because of this high demand only the prices went up automatically when people realize that there is no potential in all this business prices started falling down and when they fell down that is the bubble that got burst so that is one event the second event being the 911 attack of 2001 we can say so that also added up to the added up the fuel to the you know entire financial crunch in the us market because of this what happened people were not ready to invest people lost their hopes and everything all those shatteredness the you know economy was going down 
Now because of this what happened, let me take you somewhere to the lowering of interest rates. Now the Federal Reserve of USA, what they did is, they started in reducing the interest rates. The interest rates which were around 6.5%, they came down to 1.75% by 2001. Now when there are reduction in the interest rates, there are two things what happens. One, first things when First thing, there, are, there is no money with the people. If they don't have money, they require money. And how do they get the money? By borrowing. So that is one advantage of lowering the interest rates that with the lower interest rates, now people can borrow money at a cheaper rate, right? That is one scenario. The second thing what happened is, there is one more category of people who have money. Who, what they want to do is, they want to invest it. Now, where do they invest? They, generally, people go and invest in the equity, stock market. But we already discussed the fall of stock market now those people are not ready to invest so where did they go they went to the debt market now in the debt market interest rates are being reduced so the people who are getting 6.5 percent rate of interest now they are getting only 1.75 percent so now they don't have this option to invest so they are looking for another option and that another option happens to be the housing sector now what happens with the housing sector one thing is there those who want to invest they will invest in the real estate in the housing sector the other thing those who want to buy a house now the loan has become affordable so now they can get their houses at an affordable rate of interest so they can borrow money very easily now adding these two things people started borrowing money or whether they have their own money the result is that they started buying houses everybody was interested in getting house now this is what happened is most of the time uh, what uh, banks do is before giving the loans they check all this credit details they check all this history but here there was a huge demand and banks wanted to make money so they started giving loans based on mortgage now until now everything is fine another thing the people who are having very low income they know they don't have the capacity to repay the loan but now since the interest rates are lower they can also repay the loan now this particular category they also started taking loans and banks were ready to give because of the mortgage but the specific category where people have low income so this particular thing is called as subprime mortgage so banks were also ready to give because banks were very sure that they can always take back the property if there is a default in the repayment of loan and if there is a default banks will take over the property and they will sell it out in the open market that was a surety that banks were having now what happened is the, because of this sudden demand in the housing market from all these people housing prices also started going up so now there were a lot of people interested in getting the houses investing their money so as to get higher returns that is one scenario now because of this higher returns the demand kept on increasing only so there is a high demand for loans also now what happened with the banks banks don't have enough money to you know give loans so bank need additional money to fund people now what did they do they started selling off their existing loans to investment bankers to get the additional money and this additional money they can again give it back in the form of loans to remaining people who, whoever is demanding from them now these investment bankers are buying the loans from the people converting these loans into collateralized debt obligation we call them as cdos so these investment bankers what they did they are again converting these cdos into derivative format instruments and they are selling back to the people now those who are invested in the housing sector they are making money banks are making money these investment banks are making money now what are these investment banks these this is the list at that time these were the you know five most uh, what we can call it as you know the biggest uh, investment banks in the wall street now one more thing that happened is there was a reduction from this uh, called as securities and exchange commission there was a reduction of the leverage so now these banks were getting 30 to 40 times of the leverage so now that is again something fuel they were also having additional money now these banks i have given the list goldman sachs merrill lynch lehman brothers then bear Stearns and morgan stanley these were the banks and out of this these banks they were giving money in the form of cdo so now housing loan is there to take that housing loan banks are selling off the loans and those loans are getting converted into cdos and going to the people until here the cycle is going perfectly fine one more layer to it there is a problem what if there is a default in the repayment of loan what will happen to this entire cycle to solve this issue there comes an insurance company called as aig what they did they started giving 
insurance if in case there is a default in the payment of loan so now they call it as cds uh, shortly known as cds which stands for credit default swaps so now what are we doing with these credit default swaps if in case there is a default in the payment of loan now if there is a payment of loan of course banks are making money those cdos are making money investors are making money investment banks are making money everything is fine but what if there is a default if there is a default this entire cycle collapses so to sort it out there is a system of insurance that if there is a default you buy our insurance and we will give back the claim now the business of insurance is based on one thing that i will collect premium for hundreds of people and to one or two people i have to give back the claims if in case there is an emergency because insurance is taken for the situation of emergency now in this case this emergency would be default in payment of loans right now this thing is perfectly fine uh, there is an involvement of uh, one of the biggest company called as aig now this aig what they did is they got greedy in this situation because loans were getting paid on time and they were they wanted to issue additional insurance now insurance should be issued based on the amount of money you are having to repay the claims if i am giving you insurance i should be having that much money to give you back if there is a need if there is a like you know you are coming back to claim your insurance i should be able to give you so to give you i need to have that much money either i should have in, in the form of cash or in the form of assets whatever but i should be having now this company aig got so greedy they realized that there is no defaults so if there are no defaults that means nobody is going to come to us to claim their money so what they started they started issuing insurance even if they are not having that much money to repay if there comes a situation so that is one you know signal for trap that started now going forward to the story we need to understand this entire cycle i hope this is visible on the screen when we are saying there are four things involved one there is a loan because of the loan there is an increase in the housing sector so the price is inflated there is a because of the high demand so people are making money out there then those loans are getting converted into cdos so again investment bankers and investors are making money and those who are not able to participate in this entire cycle they are making money they are hopeful by you know buying the insurance if there is a default to ensure this entire thing there are cds right now until here this is the base for the story this is what is going fine this is what is going smooth but if there is a problem in this entire cycle the cycle will collapse so what is that problem how did it start the trouble that we are talking about now eventually what happened is federal reserve increased the interest rates by the year 2006 we are talking the interest rates went up to 5.2% now the problem is it started with subprime mortgages remember we talked about subprime mortgages those are the mortgages where loans are given to the people who are not having that enough supply of money as well just a second yeah so now the people who are not having that much money those who have taken loans they are also taking the benefit out of it but since the rates have increased now they are not in the capacity of repaying uh, repaying the loans so now if you are not in that capacity to repay the loans what is going to happen you are going to default that is what happened now there is a default because of this default one thing that happened is this cdos the loans which were converted into cdos they became zero because there is this is a nothing but a derivative instrument and if something is derived from something and that something becomes zero this something will also become zero right because this something has no value the something value is derived from some other something and the some other something has no value now so this something will also become zero now lamp fine right so that is one trouble that happened now another thing that happened because of this entire scenario is banks were very sure that you no know, cdo is fine but the, on the other hand banks are not getting their money back now what they will do if they are not getting their money back they will seize the property and that is what they started doing they started seizing the property they seized a lot of properties and they started selling them off because they need to get their money what they have given in the form of loans now <laughs> there were a lot of subprime mortgages and there were a lot of defaults and there were a lot of seizing back of the property so all this property is going back to the market and those going back to the market that means an additional supply of real estate property and an additional supply of real estate property led to fall in the prices because of there there was an additional demand from the people prices went up now there is an ad additional supply from the banks 
the price started falling now when there is fall in the prices in the housing sector what happened is the people who were having the capacity to repay the loans they realized that a property having a worth of 20 lakhs like for example a property having a worth of 20 lakhs i have taken a loan to buy that property of 50 lakhs now i have an existing loan which i have to repay of 50 lakhs and the property for which i have taken that loan this property is worth only 10 to 20 lakhs now why would i repay the loan that is what most of the people realized and they also started defaulting in repayment their loan and repaying their loans and because of their default banks again seized all those properties and sell, started selling off in the market and the prices went further down so this entire bubble which was you know artificially created by lower interest rates now because of increase in the interest rates default in the payments all those things the prices which were up high because of you know an additional demand they fell down because of this additional supply in the housing sector that is one thing so now people are in default banks are not having the money because banks have the property but they are not able to sell it off because there is again there is no demand people are not having the enough money to buy and the prices are you know further falling and falling only right that is one thing cdos have become zero so the people who are in invested those investment bankers the investors everything got zero there is no value to it now what happens to the cds see remember cds was an investment cds was is something those people who have bought the insurance now they should be able to make the money but who will pay that money the bank pay money should be paid by the insurance company remember insurance company aig we talked about aig has issued insurance without having the value to repay it now that is the reason aig got completely trashed out over here there is no money so banks are collapsing investment banks are collapsing and the insurance company is collapsing now i will tell you about this aig insurance company aig was completely trashed but because of this aig now this entire globe is bit getting affected so the federal reserve the us government had to take it over they acquired this company 80 percent of the stake of this aig was acquired by federal reserve and they started managing this company so as to save the uh, you know financial crisis to minimize li little bit to counter it back so that is one thing what happened now this uh, 25 subprime loan there is an example of something called as during february and march more than 25 subprime lenders went under it and in april uh, new century financial again this is how it started with the subprime now how did the domino fell now until now i told you the story now this is the aftermath this is the, the these are the actual numbers what happened now if you want to get into the details of numbers and you know figures and facts definitely i will link it down on the wikipedia page you can go and read it back this is the story that i'm telling you so as you should remember you should not forget these things right now the fall of domino that we are calling it as northern rock again bank of england has to bail it out and bank of england has to support and uh, the swiss bank ubs became the first major bank to announce such kind of 3.4 billion us dollar losses that is again something that emerged out of this thing and this this this, this is just the beginning this is not the end by march 2008 the demise of beer stands that is something great you remember beer stands if you don't remember let me take you back to this slide where we discussed that you know these are the five investment banks now two of these banks not two three merrill lynch lemon brothers and beer stands they could not survive lemon brothers has to go bankrupt this bank got bankrupted merrill lynch was acquired by somebody i think a morgan stanley i have the details so that is one thing that happened one bank one major bank by 2008 it fell down now this is not enough we continue with the story we come back to this um, now this, this thing was somehow uh, they were trying to manage jp morgan acquired this bank now september 2008 six months later to the story and one more bank one more investment bank now these ba investment banks have an effect in the investment market in the wall street wall street is nothing but what we have in mumbai called as the lal street like for now for now we'll call it as stock exchange new york new york stock exchange we can call it so again fall of lehman brothers lehman brothers again collapsed this was the biggest collapse in the u.s history biggest bankruptcy in the u.s history now again merrill lynch was one more company that also fell down but what we can we see now credit Suisse again this guy was arrested and 30 months of imprisonment was given to this guy why because they were not showing up 
the losses they were making out of this scenario this is the collapse but is it the one part that we are only making money this uh, like we are only losing money is there anybody making money out of it yes there are people who made money out of it who are those people one is the great investor mr warren buffett he made money out of it how go by investing in goldman sachs and general electric definitely he made money then there are some hedge funds there are uh, this investor we are talking about he also made money now there is a great movie called as the big shot you must watch that movie this is about how do you make money now you should understand who will make the most money the person who has bought the insurance because in, in insurance was based on the default if you default definitely you are going to make money uh, like if if you default definitely you are going to get a lot of money back in the form of claim if you have bought the premium and that is how most of the people made money out of it so this is the entire story not so detailed not so you know facts and database wise because facts and database you can get of course in uh, wikipedia page this was a story i i can assure you that if you uh, listen to it if you watched it till now uh, some part of it you are going to retain for sure so thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next one thank you so much bye bye